that um, in the Bible studies that uh, Maureen and I support for another church, we've been doing Advent studies. You mentioned Advent, didn't you? And um, we've done Matthew, and we've done verses from Luke, and um, then I was assigned to do the study from John 1, 1 to 14, and so I, I did that, and um, then it's been upon my heart ever since. So that's one of the reasons why we have that passage. It is a familiar passage, and when you have the nine lessons and carols, you have John 1, 1 to 14 at the end of it. If you're in the established church, everyone has to stand up for that. <laughs> so there we are. But we sat down and just had the word of God read to us to feed our hearts. Now, the word of God, the Logos. Truth is very, very important. And when we come to Christmas, and when we come to Easter, we are greatly reminded of the truths, the truths of God that set us free. We are reminded that there is correct doctrine and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ, about the Blessed Trinity, about life and death, the future, heaven and hell, judgment and mercy, and all these great truths of that we celebrate and remember as Christians. And it's very refreshing and it's very important and very helpful that we as believers are confirmed in these truths, we are reminded of these truths, and they can help us in our Christian lives. And how much we need help from time to time. And this can also enrich us and help us when people ask us questions, because we can point to prophecies and promises and scriptures that have been fulfilled these also give us hope for the future fulfilment of further scriptures and promises. So doctrine is very important. Now sadly, just as in the Old Testament the Israelites would sometimes depart from the faith and they were compromised and they would wobble in things and one prime example of that is in Exodus 32 and um, Moses on the mountain and the Israelites below and the golden calf and so on we thought about it few weeks ago. <coughs> Similarly, and sadly, in the New Testament, early church, things got wobbly as well. The apostle talked about wolves in sheep's clothing that bring in false doctrines and they damage the faith of the saints and they hurt the fellowship of believers and they spoil and mar what is true and good. And so it is that it's so important and it's such a blessing as we come towards Christmas to be reminded of what is true, what is good. What does truth mean to you and to me? What difference does truth make to you and to me? Very important. Now how about the name? I'm Ambrose. Why was I called Ambrose? Um, I think because my mother had a younger brother who was Ambrose Peter Dawson. He was known as Uncle Peter, but his first name was Ambrose. So I think that I was named after Ambrose Peter Dawson. Ambrose. What does the name mean? Anyway, I don't know, and I never asked my grandparents, but I wonder whether they named their second son, after a few daughters, Ambrose Peter Dawson, because they were thinking about the importance of truth the importance of standing up for truth, the importance of countering heresy, and I wonder if they're thinking of Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, back in the 4th century. Because Ambrose, Bishop of Milan in the 4th century, he, he really had some challenges to face. He was a theologian and statesman who served as Bishop of Milan from 374 to 397. He was a he was a well-off person, he was, he was a, a leader of a province and so on, and then he eventually became a preacher and a bishop. But he found himself having to fight against, to teach against, false doctrine. And doctrine is so important. And when we read about, in John's Gospel, about in the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, we are given teachings about Jesus being from eternity, as it were, 
or eternal, the being, and God, he was the creator, and so on. And these truths are important truths. The reason why Jesus could help us was because he was the son of God, the sinless son of man, the perfect sacrifice, and thus become the lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. And all those who believe can be justified by him. He couldn't have done this if he hadn't been eternal, divine, pure, holy. And he couldn't have done it if he hadn't gone down into the flesh and taken on human form those years ago, born in Bethlehem, crucified on the hill outside the city. So truth is very important. So Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, he was fighting this. I, I took this because I was doing a devotion of Pilgrim Holmes in Tunbridge Wells, and I do it twice a month. And they have a carer there because the, these dear old people in the lounge, they're quite frail, some of them. Some of them have to be wheeled in, and some of them, one of them has to be lifted out with a special device and put in the chair and so on. And they're, they're dear souls, they followed the law for many years, and now they're getting frail. And I was there, and there's this young carer with a slight accent, and anyway, she was in charge because the normal lady who was in charge was off doing some duty. So I was there to take the devotions and the carers there to look after the people who needed the help in the lounge. And so I started talking about this, and I talked about Ambrose in Milan, and I wasn't sure if it was my land in Milan or what it was. Anyway, after I'd done the devotion, this lady is called uh, Christy. Um, it turned out she was from Hungary, and she moved from Hungary, and she lived in... Italy in Milano for eight years. And so I really touched the heart, as it were, because I was sp speaking about <coughs> Ambrose, Bishop of Milan. And then, of course, you know this in this country. Um, so it's quite fascinating. But what she said was this. She said was that under the persecution in the Soviet Union in Hungary, instead of having the cross up, they had to have a picture of Lenin up in the church. She was from the Orthodox background, or similar, but this, this, this was so tough for her and her parents because they, had, they weren't allowed to have the cross up in the church. You've got a cross there. Suppose you had a picture of a Lenin or Putin or something up there. It wouldn't do much good, would it? You wouldn't like that. And there were certain restrictions put upon them. And she remembers what a blessing it was when the Soviet Union crumbled when Hungary became free, when falsehood, and succeeding to honour man, was moved aside, Lenin's picture was taken down, the cross was put up, and it was a hallelujah moment for them in Hungary. That, that's what it should be. The cross of Jesus is central. Jesus Christ is who matters. He is the Son of God. He is the Logos. He is the Word of God. These truths are important. So Ambrose in the fourth century, when Arian, the bishop, started uh, talking about these things, Arius, the bishop, and we have Arianism and paganism, he was fighting these things in the fourth century. And lo and behold, we, in this century, we, in this new millennium, we still have to counter heresy. But it's so important. If people are going to hear about Jesus, please, we say, let them hear about the Jesus who is described in the Bible. The Jesus who is described in Holy Writ. The Jesus who was sent by the Father. The Jesus who willingly came and took on flesh. The Jesus who is Son of God and Son of Man. The Jesus who was the good and chief and great shepherd. The Jesus who was the lamb slain for us, for sin. The Jesus who can bring redemption and deliverance and grant eternal life. This is the Jesus that we believe in. This is the Jesus that we need to present. And in the churches today, in this country and elsewhere, the chattering classes and the compromisers, there are good people in the churches, but sadly there are also these wolves in sheep's clothing and then these people who are sincere but wrong, and they are bringing in <coughs> certain false doctrines, misinterpretations, 
unhelpful thoughts which are confusing the minds of our young people, are confusing the minds of some of the church attenders. It's so important that the whole counsel of God is preached. It's so important that we take biblical truth, gospel truth, apostolic truth, revelational truth, and present it to the people. It's so important that it's presented from hearts that truly accept this truth. And that's where we stand, isn't it, as believers? That's where we stand. And so, my name is Saint Milano, <laughs> Bishop Ambrose, my name is Saint, he falls against heresy. I just uh, was so touched by this. In John 1, what do we see? We see Jesus as the Word, as the Logos. The thought of Logos or Word is a description, yes, but it's more than just a title. It is the name of someone who can do things. It has an active aspect to it, as well as a titular aspect to it. And so we have Jesus, the Word of God. Jesus, who we read about in the beginning, in this chapter it tells us he is creator, and so forth. Jesus, the Word of God. And so as you come to Christmas, as we think about the kenosis, Jesus humbling himself, becoming obedient, entering the flesh and so forth, and dying, he came to redeem us. And it becomes all the more amazing to the extent that we grasp by God's grace through the eternal spirit the immensity and the wonder and the glory of perfection of Christ coming into this world, taken on flesh. Amazing grace, says one hymn writer. How sweet the sound. And it's amazing that Jesus should come and die for us. So as we look at John chapter 1, it would be lovely to go through it and bring out all the points. But there are wonderful, wonderful truths in this. <laughs> I was following a, de a devotion on Zoom, right? finish with this, a devotional on Zoom, and uh, they have a prayer meeting, and I sometimes attend it on Zoom, and um, the person doing the devotional on Saturday morning took John chapter 1, the first part, and then he applied an application, and I thought, Ambrose, you must remember applications, this is what he said, he said, at Christmas time when Christ came down, he said what you will hear now in the Christmas services. He said, are we going to be like Simeon, rejoicing in knowing he's a Christ child? Are we, are we going to be like Mary, who was puzzled and accepted God's truth, and she pondered in her heart? Are we going to be like Joseph, who was puzzled, accepted God's truth, and became a defender of Mary and the defender of the Christ child. And so he's applying it like that. Are we going to be like the wise men? Are we going to be like the shepherds who heard the truth? They were frightened, then they rejoiced, then they saw the Christ child, then they couldn't wait to tell other people what had happened. Yeah, will Christmas do that to us as well? The Logos, the Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is worth rejoicing in his worth celebrating, he is worth telling other people about, and he is the one who can set people free from the penalty of death. He is the one who can bring eternal life, and through the Spirit, God's peace into the restless hearts, which we have in 2023, and as we move into 2024. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with us, the Word was God, but now, the Word is still with us, not just in the beginning, in creation and in eternity, not just in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, but today and every day. The Word is with us if we're His people. Amen. We have a hymn now. Up.